All right, so not done uh, modeling stream before, at least not in a while. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a try today. Hopefully the uh, laptop mic is good enough to pick me up. I'm usually on the gaming headset, uh, so I'll have to go back and listen to this later or get some responses on whether people can hear me or not. Uh, but today, um, getting started on this uh, Tamiya World War II Zero. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, American aircraft from that time period already built in on the shelf um, from the Pacific Theater. So I wanted to add uh, a companion, or, or companion is probably the wrong word, an adversary <laughs> uh, of the same scale and uh, theater of, of the conflict. So I picked this up. Uh, I'm going to build it mostly uh, straight out of the box. Um, I, the only thing I, I'm, impl I'm planning on adding are some uh, photo etch belts for the pilot because um, I tend to build my kits without the pilot in the seat. Um, so we'll need something to show that there's a restraint in the, in the cockpit. So um, as you can see, Opening the box, of course I've, done, I've looked at it already a little bit to make sure I have bright paint colors and stuff. Um, but this is, is quite literally day one. Um, at some point I'll need to decide which paint scheme um, I want to use. Uh, I've got a couple that are um, land-based aircraft. Uh, and one that is uh, from the J Carrier Junior. Um, not sure which I'll go with just yet. I mean, the paint schemes are almost identical. Um, so this one here is one of the uh, the land-based zeros, uh, and you can, you can see here this one has almost the exact same scheme. So the main differences would be in the um, and the numbering on the on the, uh, on the serial on the tail, uh, and a few other minor details like that. Uh, this guy over here is a little bit different. The, you can see this guy, the, the dark line, the dark pattern comes up, uh, and you don't see that here. This goes straight across. Um, so I'll have to uh, decide what to do there. Um, some of that may be driven by the fact that uh, I have another zero uh, from Hasegawa um, that I originally planned on building, but I opened it up and the decals were all um, yellow. <laughs> the carrier film on them was all yellow, so they were, they were uh, not usable. Uh, and this particular kit uh, from Tamiya comes with um, enough decals to actually decal two kits, I think. Um, at the very least, I know it has uh, two different sets of the meatballs for the wings um, and such. So at the very least, I've got that. Uh, whether or not I have everything else I need, or not, obviously the tail serial numbers would be would be unique from, from plane to plane, so I would have a couple sets of those. Whether or not I have everything else I need or not, um, I'm not sure, uh, but we will deal with that when the, uh, when the time comes. So hopefully at the end of this I'll have uh, one nice zero built and another set of decals that I can stick in the box for my, uh, my Hasegawa kit. Um, so we'll see how this goes today. Um, Obviously, you've got to start with, with some basic assembly. Um, a lot of this will be airbrushing, and I'm not, not exactly sure how I'm going to set the camera up so that you can actually see the airbrushing um, without making you motion sick in the process, but we'll try. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to that today or not, because um, I do want the glue to dry nice and well. 
uh, but we will be doing some some of the basic assembly, uh, probably of the cockpit today. I may end up making a just sub assembly, uh, sub assembly day, so we can do things like like the engines, um, uh, the, the engine and the prop and uh, the cockpit and, and a few odds and ends like that that we might be able to uh, assemble because they are all of, of similar color, for instance. Um, I like I like to paint as much as I can. That's going to be the same color after it's been glued together. This paint just gives it one more uh, kind of component of of, of uh, strength. So uh, we'll see how much we can do of that. I may try some hand brushing uh, of some smaller components. But we'll see. Uh, this is really going to be kind of an experiment today to see how well the uh, the camera can be moved around without uh, making everybody seasick. Um, so I guess we'll start with the. Uh, looks like it might actually have. Oh, uh, so our, one of the things that Tamiya does, I thought for a second that it had belts. Um, based on based on the drawing here, uh, which surprised me because I didn't see any when I looked through the, the box earlier. But I forgot that uh, Tamiya will do that sometimes with their more more recent kits and, and say, you know, we've got this really nice set if you want to buy it. Um, I bought just generic um, just generic belts to uh, to add that will work for any any Japanese aircraft. Uh, rather than buying the ones specifically for this 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 build, um, so yeah. Um, just looking at it, there's not a there's going to be some things that I can put together, uh, and other things that I can't. Uh, so if you're not familiar with with Tamiya. Aircraft uh, or, or their builds in general, their the molding is always very good, um, especially on their newer stuff. The panel lines are are, are very well drawn on the wings. Let me see. Get this to where you can see it. So you can see the panel lines there on the, on the under wing. Um, very nicely molded, um, and deep enough that they'll stand out with some uh, some washes later, some paint washes later, uh, but not so deep that they are out of scale. And some good riveting work and the like. I have read that um, that this join that will join with the fuselage on the underside is a little rough. Um, so I may have to do some sanding and filling. Um, there, but I've got some good stuff for that. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully it'll fit better than the review I read. Um, but we'll we'll see how it how it goes. Hey, Miranda. Um, since you're the first person that I know of that's in here, um, is the audio okay? This is over my laptop's uh, microphone. So <laughs> hopefully the audio is okay. I didn't want to wear my uh, gaming headphones to do this because I don't have any any game or music playing in the background, and so they kept shutting off. Oh, hi, Clary. Hopefully, you can hear me as well fairly well. Actually, I might wait a minute for one of you to tell me that you can hear me. It shows that it's picking up my voice, but uh, I don't know how well. Yeah, 
thinking about keep talking while maybe one of you respond to me eventually. Um, oh, sounds okay. Great. Thanks, Clary. Clary gets the gold star for responding today. Um, so yeah, uh, if I keep doing this, I'll probably need to get a, a better microphone that I can use for this purpose, but the uh, laptop webcam or laptop uh, microphone will have to work for now. So for you guys just tuning in, this is what we're building today. I mean, more than just today, but uh, that's what we're working on. Because I have I have two uh, U.S. Navy aircraft, for which this would have been a good would have been a good um, adversary for. Um, so I wanted to have something to pair together. All right. So first thing I like to do when I start a new kit is to make a lot of noise. Um, no, the main thing I like to do is, uh, oh, we've got puppy news. Hold on a second. I'm going to mute my mic for a second. Go back.
Okay, we're back. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Larry. And so sorry. Yeah, so when I, when I downloaded uh, Streamlabs onto my laptop, it asked if I wanted to install a scene. And I was like, well, I don't want to pay for anything right now. Um, but it had a uh, it had one, so I clicked on it, and I hadn't given it any, any payment op op options or anything, and it, it just installed it. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess there are some free ones. And so I went to their um, theme list, and, uh, and yeah, they, had, they had free themes. So um, I, I, found, I found this one um, to be reasonably, uh, reasonably cheap, I guess, because it was free. <laughs> and I uh, decided to uh, try to add it there. Um, so sorry about the, the break there. Um, we may be adopting a puppy, so more information on that to come later. Um, so uh, where was I? Yeah, right. So the first thing I like to do um, when I start a new kit is to replace the blade on my Exacto knife because um, uh, they get dull. So even though this one's still uh, still fairly sharp. Uh, actually, I say that, but this one is still really sharp, so I think I might keep this one a little longer um, until I start dealing with some maybe decals or some very very detailed parts. Um, but anyway, usually what I would do is uh, is, is exchange exchange an old blade for a new one. Uh, but I think I'm going to, to to not do that this time. Um, so we'll just uh, keep progressing on then um, instead. So um, I like using um, Tamiya's glue, um, the, the, the thin cement, uh, particularly the extra thin. Um, and they have a couple of different kinds. Um, they've got uh, the standard extra thin cement, which I, looks like I need to get some more of actually, uh, and then also a quick setting. And this stuff is fast; um, it, it dries it dries very quickly. Um, the dry is actually the wrong word; it, it almost kind of melts the plastic together a little bit, um, so that um, you you almost don't have two parts anymore. So it's almost like you just got a, a single part. So when you when you when you use it, you better damn well know you got where you want it to be because <laughs> it's not easy to get it apart. And when you do, um, it actually the, the join is no longer um, clean. It'll actually be almost almost gooey. Um, so you don't want to use too much of it and let it squish out of the joint because then it could actually leak outside what you're going to see um, and, and damage the surface. And then it's very difficult to uh, to fix that. Um, so, because I like to build things um, and then and have a lot of a lot of things pre pre-assembled and, and then paint them all when they're the same color, I kind of jump around the steps. Um, so, looking at the instructions, um, there's three three initial steps for the main cockpit tub, if you will. Um, and I'm going to be kind of picking and choosing a few of those parts um, that are of the same color so that uh, if I decide to uh, airbrush them, which I probably will today, um, hopefully on camera, but we'll see how that goes, um, then they'll all be of the same color. And then I'll come back, um, like for instance on the in instrument panel, most of it is this uh, cockpit green color, um, but then there are some other components that are uh, semi-gloss black, uh, flat aluminum, um, actually that's it on this particular kit. Um, also the uh, back ends of the, uh, the guns here, uh, different colors. And then inside we have um, some red here. Uh, some more, more semi-gloss black. 
Uh, most of it is this uh, this um, cockpit green color, which is uh, a nice pale green that uh, is quite common uh, both in um, Japanese and uh, a lot of uh, U.S. aircraft of the time. Um, the paint that they used had some anti-corrosive uh, properties. Uh, I think it was zinc chromate or something like that that they used to uh, protect the, 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 the interior uh, metal surfaces from, from rust and corrosion which is very difficult, of course, in the Pacific Ocean, uh, where, where these particular aircraft uh, were used. So again, I don't know which, which uh, decal set I will use, whether it will be one of the land-based uh, sets of markings or the, uh, the one carrier-based option I've got, but that's the decision for much later down the road. Um, so let's get started. Um, we'll just start with some general assembly um, and see how far we get today. Uh, so I use these, these clippers to uh, get the, the pieces off the trees in a relatively clean manner and then come back with the X-Acto knife and just clean up the, the cut because it's never clean. These, these, these clippers have very sharp blades, but they're basically pinching the plastic off. Um, and so it doesn't usually come off very clean. Uh, so I want to make sure that the parts are nice and smooth. Uh, So that when the paint when I paint them later, you don't get this rough spot. That is obviously where the uh, the part was removed from the tree. Fun fun part about early early on in the kit is finding the part. I mean they're all they're all numbered, but there's so much on these trees that uh, it's easy to get lost forest through the trees, ha ha ha. Um, but uh, later on, when a lot of these parts are now off the tree and assembled, it becomes quite easy. You know, I need this off of tree A, and there's like three parts there, so it's a lot easier to see uh, what you're trying to find. So how's everybody's... Uh, Saturday's morning going. Got a pretty quiet day here so far. Got up and went and got some breakfast. Um, real fancy breakfast at McDonald's, mostly because I wanted some. Coffee. Um, I, I had tried a new coffee brand from the store, uh, and it was it was terrible. Uh, so I didn't have the coffee that I wanted this morning. So I went and picked some up. Okay. Normally, I would have glued these together because they're going to be the same color, but it would be very difficult to make sure that I got the full backside of this painted the right color. So I'm actually going to leave these separate and just start kind of putting them in a group of parts that uh, need to be the same base color. But I don't, I don't know how clear you can see it. The, this, is the, this will be the instrument panel, and it's got quite a good bit of de detail on it. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on it. Yeah, that's good. So you can see the little instrument dials 
in there. Uh, obviously, no instruments in them yet. Uh, but those will uh, eventually have a decal over them that um, shows the uh, the instrument di instrument dials that would have been there on the real thing. Uh, so that's that's one thing that will will come later. I'm glad I'm glad it's been a quiet day so far. Clear. You feeling better after moving the uh, washer and dryer around? Uh, so here's a piece that's actually going to be mostly black, but I can hand paint the, the, the semi-gloss back black pretty well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, attach that part so that again the um, both the glue and the paint provide a uh, a nice bond. Um, not that I expect these to be able to withstand a, a crash to the ground or something like that, but I do like to have some um, extra strength when I can get it. Um, and in this case, the, the uh, benefit of painting things that are similar color and then coming back and having to hand paint other things later uh, is, is worth the... Uh, Extra, extra difficulty of the hand painting. Part one, <laughs> or glue number one that we've done so far in this first day of, of building this zero. There were, I noticed a couple of parts that are largely semi-gloss black, but um, again, the same main interior color. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to the kit, to, to, the, to, the, to the part, so that uh, I, I don't, I don't like to airbrush a color for like the majority so so another way I could have done this right is I could have airbrushed the the main part of the the instrument panel that is very out of focus there we go so I could have airbrushed the main part of the of the uh, instrument panel and then hand painted these two pieces that are going to be added but then the um, the colors won't be quite the same uh, because the the way that the airbrush puts the color down and the way that the that the, the hand brush picks the color up and puts it down are are different and so the 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 hue or the tone of the of the of the color wouldn't be the same um, so I try not to try not to hand brush and airbrush the same colors on the same part. Now, I may, I may hand brush the same color somewhere else uh, because the, the human eye doesn't really pick that up being that far separated, and that's okay. Um, but I don't like to cause myself problems that, that way that early. <laughs> um, so in, in this case, since, since I have two parts that are going to be uh, they're going to have the same color on them even though the small part that I just added which again is out of focus um, the small part that I just added is going to be mostly black there's this little part on the side that is going to be that interior green and I want it to match the interior green that's going to be literally right next to it um, so even though that means I have a large part of, of the part that I need to hand paint semi-gloss black semi-gloss black paints hand paints pretty well um, I, I usually you know, on small parts I will hand paint um, the semi-gloss blacks um, because it's, it's pretty easy to do um, I've never I've never I've 
actually not, not even opened this uh, Imperial Japanese Navy green yet, <laughs> uh, for instance, or the um, the cockpit green that we'll be using for the inside. Uh, so I have no idea how well it brushes, but I have a good idea how the uh, semi gloss black brushes. So, so we will leave that as it is. Other parts um, that I won't add here um, at the moment, again, is that back plate because um, I don't want to uh, miss some of, the, of, of it, I'm getting it painted because it's covered by the uh, uh, instrument panel. Um, so we'll leave that separate for now. Um, this, is, this is a little odd, the instructions are a little contrary here as to whether the back of this should be... Oh, I, I think I understand. So, so there's this part, uh, what part number is that? C2, that's a different tree. Which tree is C? That's E. That's D, oh, C and D here. We keep getting one extra viewer, because right now I know I have Cleary and Marind and Nin in here. We keep getting one extra viewer, and I get excited that someone might be new and ask a question, and then they disappear. <laughs> I guess that they, they, they looked at it and go, what the heck is it, Tamiya A6, 5A, 0, first day, what the heck is this? Oh, it's this? No, this is boring. Uh, anyway. Uh, so here you can see the size of the um, fuselage. So that's about how, how, how long the aircraft's going to be. Um, so if we actually measure it out um, without the uh, without the engine uh, nacelle, or the engine housing, I should say, it's about 160 millimeters long, or uh, six and a quarter uh, inches in freedom units. Uh, so kind of give you the size of how, how long it is. It's not a big air, airplane. Um, the um, the Japanese of the time um, built built their their aircraft to be very uh, very light. Uh, they didn't have much armor, um, but they were very very fast. And so early on, um, things like the Wildcat. Just couldn't catch them. They, they could, they were faster. They could, they could climb faster. They could dive faster. They could turn, turn tighter, um, and just outmaneuver what we had. Um, so the fact that they really didn't have any armor didn't matter that much because we couldn't hit them. <laughs> now, obviously, that was not, not 100% true, um, but it's just the, the generality of it. Um, so they were small. They were nimble, but they were fragile. Um, so when we got things like the um, the Hellcat and the Corsair and the, and the Lightning and things like that out there into the Pacific Theater later in the war, um, that could keep up with their uh, with their speed and their agility, but were uh, typically much heavier, arm armored and armed. Um, it became a very bad day uh, to be a, a very bad time to be a zero pilot. So here's another case where um, I'm not I'm not going to assemble these like I normally would, even though the, the, a lot of it's the same color because um, you can see there's a gap there, and it would be very difficult to airbrush uh, all the inside of that component. And some of it uh, you should be able to see um, from within the cockpit. I just I need to see how much of that's true because I may need to add some uh, wiring because what this is. The back of the uh, of the instrument panel. So let me hold all these parts together and show you. So this is what we've got. Um, this little sandwich once it focuses. Focus. Thank you. So you can see this focus where my my thumb is is the instrument panel, and my finger is kind of the backside of, of the instrument cluster. Um, 
And so there would be some wiring going through that gap that you can see um, towards the back there. And I need to see how much of that is actually visible once you put it in the cockpit. And if some of it is, then I'll stick some wiring in there just to make it look like there's something going on there other than just being boring. Um, it may be that that gap is there now, but then once once you put it into the um, into the fuselage, you can't see it anymore. So I'm not going to put that kind of work in if you can't see it. Uh, so we're skipping a few things. Um, we're not going to put the gun receivers on because they're they're entirely flat black. Um, I'll have to decide whether I'm going to hand paint these or not. Um, I know I just said a few minutes ago I don't like to hand paint and airbrush two different things. Um, but the color on the instruments and the color on the guns, I think that would be reasonable to be a little bit different. In fact, these may, I may end up painting these uh, like a dark gun metal or something rather than um, flat black or semi gloss black. So we'll see uh, what we do about that later. Um, right, so looks like we're moving on to the floor of the cockpit uh, tub. Quite a good bit of detail on this part too. Let me get this cleaned up and I'll show you what it looks like. So it looks like we may be uh, adopting a puppy. Um, man has been looking for a while, uh, wanting to find a furry cuddly companion, um, and has found a small breed. Uh, Called Havanese uh, that she's thinking about adopting. So she's been emailing back and forth with the uh, potential person she'd adopt from. So she's quite excited about that. Uh, so yeah, I, I was going to show you the, the detail here. So this is just the the, the floor pan of the. Um, of the cockpit, so we'll add we'll add some parts to this because a lot of it is the same color. Um, so that once we paint it, it will all match well. Need to find fret F, and they never are quite so obvious as to what goes where. There's E, that's Z, or Z for my Canadian viewers, weirdos, we love you anyway, C and D, it's F clear, that's pretty good. I'm gonna drop. F is clear, why did they make that a clear part? That is strange. It's not supposed to stay clear, is it? No, it's definitely painted. That's odd. Maybe, hmm. Oh, I see. So, I think, is that right? That can't be right, that's weird. Um, there's the, no, that might be right. I'll have to look at this to be, to be a little, a little bit uh, careful here, but, um, let's see if I can sh I can show you this. I don't know if this is 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 that viewable or visible. But that's the word I wanted to use. But this part right here, or um, it's actually molded in clear plastic. Um, 
And I think, and I need to check on this, um, I think that's because this, this one part here that's a little bit lighter than the rest of it is supposed to remain clear. And if that's true, that's so the pilot could look down basically between their legs, um, between their feet, and actually see below the aircraft. And I think that needs to remain clear. And if so, that's going to be a pain in my butt. <laughs> but um, we'll go ahead and get it glued in place. And um, before I do some painting, I'll, I'll do a quick check to see if that needs to remain clear. And further, if you'll even be able to tell, which is more important. I'm, I'm all for, um, for accuracy in my builds. Um, trying to get things the right color, um, the right, right and make things the right, the right size. So, like when I build my uh, uh, my naval ships, um, I love, a lot of times I'll get extra extra parts, and aftermarket parts in in metal that are more scale accurate than the plastic could ever be. Um, so, I do like aiming for um, accuracy in my builds. But that being said, if you can't see it, who cares? <laughs> so like, like I was talking about the wiring on the back of the um, back of the instrument panel earlier, I'll need to check to see how much of that is actually visible because if it's not visible, there's no point in me spending two hours doing it for it to end up being that, oh, I remember that it's there. I might have a photo of it being there, but if you actually look at it in my case, you'll never see it. <laughs> So I'll need to check on that to see if it's even um, even true. Uh, but it, it certainly looks that way, um, both from the diagram of the painting and how this is molded. It does look like a little reinforced window there. So I need to do a quick Google here in a little bit to see if I need to to see if I need to, um, to mask that off. Uh, because since I don't put my pilots in, this may actually be quite visible. Um, and what that means is I actually need to pull out a different glue. Um, so one of, the, one of the problems with clear plastic parts, they're a different kind of plastic. Um, and uh, one, you definitely don't want to use super glue. Uh, but even even the even the, the quick set cement like that can actually cause the clear part to uh, cloud up, um, thus no longer becoming a clear part. Um, so there are glues like this one that are um, specifically format, formulated for canopies or, or the, the, the glass, and I use them for, for other clear parts. It's basically Elmer's glue, uh, the white glue that you used in, in uh, grade school. Um, more or less, that's what it is. Um, in fact, uh, that's what I used uh, for a long time before getting this. Um, I've had this for this particular bottle for a long time because it doesn't take much. Um, one of the nice things about this particular kind of glue is it's uh, also less brittle. So the, um, the Tamiya glue actually bonds the plastic together. So it's, it's, it's not very brittle. Uh, in fact, it's very difficult to separate things cleanly afterwards. Super glue is nice because it, um, it bonds very quickly and very, very, very strong, but um, it's very brittle. Um, so if you if you put some force on it in the wrong direction, uh, it's very easy to um, snap that bond. Um, usually, at the most inopportune times. Um, so the nice thing about this glue is even though I got somewhere I don't want it, it dries clear. Um, and once it dries well, it's also easy to uh, clean up. 
because it just kind of scrapes off. Uh, but it dries much slower than the Tamiya glue. Uh, so you have to give it some time to, to set up. So, but the more I look at that, and now this is this here is the front. Um, so the, the pilot would be looking down at that part. Um, so I'm, the more I think about it, the more likely I, I think that that probably is supposed to be supposed to be clear. So that's it's going to be interesting because it's a very small part, and I don't think it came with a mask for that. So let's just look. No, it doesn't look like it. So it does come with a very nice uh, mask with a canopy so that you can mask off all the um, the glass and just paint the frame of, of, the, of the glass. But it doesn't look like it came with a mask for that small part. No. Nope, nope. Which means I'll have to make it out of uh, some masking tape or or some such thing. That's going to be a challenge. All right, back to the sidebar. So again, I'll have to, I'll have to pause later to uh, to find out what that needs to be done, whether that needs to be done or not, because. I don't want to do. It. I don't want to do it if I don't have to. <laughs> um, it'd be very, uh, very challenging to be done done well. I can't hear it. It sounds like an Air Force jet or something flying over our, our house. Quite loud. Here's one of those parts that's uh, it's pretty small, and so you have to be real careful with the, um, the direction that you trim it, um, because it could be quite easy to uh, snap the part. Uh, and while I think even my um, model building stream is marked mature, because I'm lazy and haven't gone and turned that off, I would rather not start cussing this early in the build. So I need to be better about putting my hands in the right place so you guys can actually see what I'm doing rather than just a blur. I'm not used to uh, doing this so that other people can see it. And you may still not be able to, it's kind of small. Let's see. Maybe that's a little better. So a lot of the um, early work in most models is, is some basic assembly. Um, part cleanup like this, depending on the age of the kit, could be a lot of part cleanup. If you have a lot of um, molding lines and quality issues with, with the plastics. Um, it can cause more or less problems. It fits in there nicely, so we'll pop some glue on it and stick it in there. Again, putting a... using the white glue Because this is on a clear plastic part that I may want to leave clear. So I'm making sure that we have uh, no clouding issues. So using that uh, clear plastic part, or like that glue that's appropriate for the part. So 
So now we've got the um, foot pedals in. That looks like we can add the stick. A48. Here. So it says that this is mostly that same interior green. Um, the base where the stick meets the floor uh, is called out as flat black or not, uh, semi-gloss black, which makes sense to be rubber, so that uh, that would be a black. What it doesn't say, though, is whether or not the handle should be like wood or, or uh, leather wrapped or something. Um, so another thing that I'll, I'll need to look into to see uh, what that looks like. Jet is flying over again. It was loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm used to hearing aircraft over our, our house because we live not too far from an international airport, so there's, there's usually a lot of um, aircraft flying overhead, but uh, not usually that, uh, that loud. Okay, so let's see, we can, that will go here, it does not interface with the clear part, so we can use, where do I need to go, this one, okay, trying to, still trying to figure out the framing here, so we can use the, um, the standard Tamiya cement, once we get it in place. One of the nice things about this um, Tamiya Thin Cement is that uh, rather than putting it on the part or that you're adding or onto the surface that you're adding the part to, it's very thin and has a very nice capillary action. Um, so if the part fits tightly, which it doesn't in this case, you can actually just place the part and then add the glue. In this case, however, the part does not fit that well, or is not a tight fit. So, a little pre-application to soften up the plastics is needed. That way it will kind of um, hold itself in place, more or less. Then we can worry about the final fit and positioning. Now we can add some more glue using the capillary action that it, that it works so well with. Really get down there and uh, make sure everything is nice and solid. So there we have the control stick. Make sure that it is perpendicular to the floor. Nice. So that's the uh, most of the floor down there. Uh, looking at what else I can do. So we have the rear bulkhead that we can add. Now, one thing I have to think about is how to hold this while I'm painting it. These holes are small enough that I could uh, use a toothpick or something to, to hold on to it. So. so here we have very nicely detailed 
uh, rear bulkhead. And this is where the um, the seat will attach. And some brackets that will go onto it. You see, attach here. And then all of it will be combined to make the, uh, the cockpit. So we'll go ahead and put the brackets on, but again, just like with the um, instrument panel, we don't want to put on too much, or we might not be able to uh, get all the right angles to uh, make sure everything is painted appropriately. I think it keeps trying to focus on that instructions. Is that the problem? I want you to focus here. There we go. Probably need to do some reading on how to get that set so that it fits the image correctly. So, oops. We have this base component. That goes here. And that fits nicely. So we can come in with the uh, FM and get that glued into place. So ultimately, the, um, the pilot's seat will rest on this and sit on top of it. Uh, and the backrest goes against part 60. Yeah, well, that goes in. So we need the bracket to go down, and it fits into the backrest like so, although not quite as robustly as the lower component. So we will reapply some glue. over there, it's okay. Be careful. And then we can insert the pins to their spots. Like so. And so there you've got the um, the brackets for the seat. Where is the seat? Do I want to take that off yet? Yes, I think I will because otherwise it will have some hand painting I have to do later. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't like to hand paint and airbrush the same color. So I'm not going to attach this at the moment because I want I want to be able to fully paint the bracket. But I'll, I will show you what it will look like ultimately. Doesn't look right. That's because it's not. Good thing these aren't, aren't fragile parts. Huh? Keep dropping them. How does that sit on there? Mm, the picture is not very good. Anyway, it'll look something like this once it focuses. Is here, thank you. It'll look something like this when it's done. But again, I'm not going to glue that on just yet because I want to be able to paint the brackets fully. Well, you know, I say that. They're actually still pretty visible. So I may. You know, since, since the back side of this is 
dropping things. Since the back side is hollow, it'll make it easy to get to the back side of the seat and to the backs of the uh, brackets. So I think I will go ahead and glue, glue it on just for the additional uh, rigidity that the paint will add. So there I go, changing my mind. So we'll go ahead and get that glued together. And there we go. So now the seat is attached to its brackets on the rear bulkhead. And I can use a toothpick through one of the smaller uh, holes in the in the bracket or in the bulkhead to hold it while I airbrush it later. Uh, so I'll make it very easy to get to all of the seat as well as the back, etc. One moment, my wife is hovering over my shoulder. Gotta mute for just a second. Okay, we're back. Uh, where were we? So let's see, what else can we do with the cockpit um, that's of the same color? Ah, so we do have a few more pieces here that we can we can add. So we don't we don't want to add these uh, canisters in the back. Honestly, I don't know what they are, but they're not of the same color. We do have this, uh, this component here that we can add. Um, that's mostly uh, mostly that interior green color with a little bit of, of flat aluminum on it. And then we might go ahead and add this this arm as well, but I need to see how well it uh, it attaches. I might I might uh, dry fit the floor to the rear bulkhead and then glue this just to the rear bulkhead so that it's in the right uh, position um, and then separate the pieces. Uh, we'll see, well, actually we'll see what it looks like when I, when I do all that. First let's find that, uh, that side piece, that was part 59. So this is a very fragile piece, very thin arm here. So we'll take some precision on the cleaning. Sorry about the printer noise in the background. Sorry. Min was saying earlier that she 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 apologized because. Um, 
normally she leaves me alone while I'm modeling, um, or will occasionally look over my shoulder and that's it. Um, but since she's emailing back and forth with this uh, potential puppy adopter, adoptee, no, we're, uh, whatever, the person that we're adopting from, she needs to come and ask me questions and that she's printing out an agreement. And, Maybe for some reason it will not print from my uh, my uh, computer here, but it will print from the phone sometimes. So try to print it from the phone and see if that works. Sorry, my brain is a little disjointed today. Add this lever. We've got to clean now. I guess it's just not going to fit very tightly. It does not, but I can hold it in place well enough. I have three fresh pieces of paper. So we've got the lever arm on there. I don't know what it's a lever for, but it's on there. Uh, but, but there it is. So I need to pause for a minute. I need to troubleshoot printer issues. Um, so we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry, babe.
All right, so we're back. Sorry about that. Um, dealing with printer issues and digital signatures and money transfers and all those kinds of fun things for OB adoption. So more details on that later. I will likely be asked to pause once more to actually do the money transfer because we haven't done that yet. But we'll come back to that. So I. Um, while I was waiting for information from, from my wife, I did dry fit those pieces together. So you can see they, they fit very nicely together. Um, so this is, this is just a fr friction fit. It's not, it's not glued or anything. Um, I still, I pressed off. I'm tempted to go ahead and paint it assembled like this again for that extra strength. Um, I need to think about that a little bit longer, but the problem is, it would be difficult to get under the seat um, to get that all painted right. But to be honest, uh, not that I would lie on stream or anything, but <laughs> common phrase, right? Once you get the seat and, and everything in there and it all closed up, you're not really going to see that very well anyway. So, I don't know. I, I, I may end up uh, going against my standard processes and um, actually assemble this and paint it in one swoop and then come and hand paint what I need to around it. Um, we'll see. But what we will do is use that as a jig to fit the uh, left side controls onto uh, onto the uh, rear bulkhead so that uh, it's maintained in the correct uh, position. Thank you, Clear. Um, with the appropriate uh, Rigidity. Okay, looks like I just got a message about what to do about payment. So, apologies, we will pause once more, but this may be the last, maybe the last time. Okay, I think that will be the last time. Um, so we have now sent sent the funds to to adopt this dog. Uh, so now we wait uh, to see about 
transport details. Um, she'll be coming from Florida, actually. Um, so we'll see how quickly that, uh, that turnaround occurs. So, thanks again. <laughs> um, so what we were doing, we are going to use the dry fit uh, rear bulkhead and floor to position this side arm. This is going to be very, very difficult to separate after it dries, I think. So the more I think about this, the more I'm thinking I may just bite the bullet and glue these parts together. My airbrush is pretty good. Um, so hopefully it won't give me too much trouble on getting to those areas that are difficult to see. So, you know what? Executive, executive decision. We're just going to go ahead and glue those parts together. So, what's done is done. Very difficult to undo now. <laughs> so I hope I don't regret this in 30 seconds. And I realize that I just screwed myself, but I don't think that's going to be the case. As I said, I've got a very capable airbrush, so it should it should make um, it fairly straightforward to uh, get into all the nooks and crannies. So there we have it: um, the majority of the cockpit tub is is there assembled. Um, so what that will ultimately look like, so if I grab these front parts again and just kind of see if they'll, I don't think this is going to be very easy to demonstrate without actually gluing these together and I don't want to do that, I don't think. Although, again, I may change my mind here in just a moment, but uh, this will go on like that, more or less, and that will be the majority of the interior. So I think what I'm going to do is... the fuselage halves off the tree and just see what it looks like when the, the seat is in there and, and, and see just what is really visible. So I think I'm going to do that. So these are parts are a little bigger so we'll zoom out for a bit. You don't need to see my stream manager. I'll move that over here. Um, so we'll go ahead and pop the fuselage halves off. Oh, I missed one. Now these I need to clean really carefully because these will be highly visible come um, final assembly. Go ahead and get the other half off. So there are my two fuselage halves. And so see, they've got some some pieces that have to be cut off. Because they don't, they won't fit otherwise. Those are little nubs that were where the, um, like where my thumb is, 
were where the, uh, the parts were attached to the, the tree. So instead of having it on the, on the surface as actually going to be visible, they molded the, um, the tree such that the, the part you cut off is actually on the inside on that join. Um, so it makes it nice and clean uh, when, we, when we remove that so that it doesn't uh, impact negatively the, uh, the look of the, of the join. So we will actually come in with our clippers and clip that down low. Unfortunately, they only did that on the underside. The one on the top is not quite that nice. We'll have to be very careful with that one because, let's see, there's a lot of, maybe difficult to see, there's a lot of molding detail in there, rivets and stuff. That will need to be very carefully uh, trimmed around so that we don't... Uh, lose that detail. Now, there are uh, tools that you can buy to replace molded in rivets like that if you have to stand them down, which we may end up having to do. I don't have such a thing, but I do have um, some like dental tools almost that can be used for similar purposes. So the good news is we got those two off very very smoothly. This one's in a good spot here on the, uh, the front of the engine nacelle because it's actually going to be completely covered by uh, the engine cover, the name of which is, is eluding me at the moment. Um, I think we have another one here that we need to remove. Let's see. Yep, same thing at the, at the tail. So we have another spot that I missed down here that clips off nice and cleanly. Which means that the, um, the seam on the underside, assuming that I align it correctly, um, when I glue the two halves together much later, shouldn't have much of a, a gap that needs to be filled. really dislike the placement of this one. Again, because it's right there next to so much detail. And you can tell that I'm concentrating because I'm talking softer as if that makes a difference on how much plastic I shave off here. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm basically shaving this plastic down try to be as flush as possible with the surface that I actually want without making a divot or um, losing some of that detail. So I think I was successful there. Looks like I've got a nice smooth clean spot there. So now we do it again on the other side. So we'll go ahead and clip those three protuberances. I'm kind of with the exacto knife and carefully smooth that out. Again, just trying to shave down the un unnecessary plastic, leaving leaving what's left because um, the the stuff you're trying to remove is of the same hardness or softness, depending on the way you want to look at it, as the stuff you don't want to remove. So it's very easy to remove too much, and then you have this little divot um, that you have to come back and fill. And when you fill it, you've got to then sand it down, and if you sand it down, then um, you run the risk of losing some detail. Um, now, unlike some kits, uh, some some aircraft I've built, there's not a whole lot of detail around the lower half of the fuselage seam. 
that's good. It makes it easier to uh, recover from, from those kinds of mistakes. But we'd rather not have them um, to begin with. So the less filling and joining that we have to do like that, um, the better off we'll be. Uh, so here's the part again where I whisper. Just hoping that I can remove only what's needed here. And I think I might have lost a rivet there, but not too bad. Not too bad. That feels pretty smooth. So I want to check you can kind of run your fingernail over it to see if you can feel the where the plastic was to see if it's uh, holding up well. So now you can see even as careful as I was, there are, there are some gaps in the plastic, which means that even though it felt like I wasn't, I did indeed uh, lose some extra plastic there. So I will have to do some filling. Uh, not a whole lot, just a little bit. I can either do that with super glue, or I've got this, uh, this plastic putty uh, that I've not tried before, but um, I've been given uh, very... Uh, high praise for this stuff I've read about. So uh, should make it easy to, uh, to fill those gaps. Uh, and also they're on the underside, so it's, it's not a terrible, a terrible problem anyway. Uh, but before we can really see what the what is visible inside, there are actually a couple other parts that we need to be aware of. Um, the There's a, 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 the nose, the forward part of the, uh, the fuselage is a separate piece that you can see if I hold these together. It doesn't look like there's anything up here, uh, but there should be. Um, so we will grab that part. Which part is that? C3. So that we can look at what is visible inside the cockpit. So just a couple of snips there. Clean that up nicely. Taking off a little too much plastic there, so I may have to fill that later too, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Here's another nice uh, view of some of the molding. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to see. I'm trying to get a reflection off of it, but there's actually a little uh, hatch or panel here that's actually uh, molded in very nicely. And then these are the, um, the slips where the uh, Over over engine uh, armament will will poke out. It's a technical term, poke out. Uh, now the problem is I don't know that this fits on there without some of the underlying components that I'm not ready to glue on. So I want to see how well this will just friction into place. The answer is not very. Not very well. That may be good enough for my purposes. So that's what the nose will look like. At some point. Uh, once I get some of the... Uh, and there are also side panels 
one of the nice things about this kit is you've got these side panels that you can choose to leave on, leave on or off um, if you wanted to actually display um, some of the interior components that would require uh, extra stuff uh, to, be, to be purchased. Um, extra stuff of which I have not purchased, so um, we will not be having that. Uh, that one good. The friction fit is good enough. Nope, nope, I say that and it flips off. Uh, this didn't flip me off, it just flipped off. So this goes in. Maybe difficult without the, uh, the front half. But let's just see. Looks like it goes in like so. Yeah, so. You can maybe see the, the window there at the bottom. You can kind of see my finger behind it, maybe, changing the color. So it is visible through the, the canopy once I have that on. So I do need to check, but my guess is that is a window for which I will need to a mask so that it actually shows up right. So I don't know if you can see that, but hopefully you can. Again, the kind of color or the shadow changing there uh, on, the, on the floor of the of the cockpit. So I'll have to uh, have to look into that. Good news is, uh, doesn't look like I've got to do any filling back here, so I didn't scrape that too tightly. And my guess is the glue will actually fill uh, the little bit of uh, too much that I scraped off in the front. Uh, also, good news is it looks like I may not have to worry about any wiring on the back side. So, let's see, how do I want to do this? I, I still want I want to test it before I actually start gluing things together because it would be quite annoying to glue it together and then find out that I did indeed need. To see the back side, so I'm going to uh, tape it all together. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm just taping the three parts that uh, comprise the. Uh, Instrument panel and and uh, components behind it, kind of firewall, if you will. Um, thinking of car terms there, I don't know if that's what it's actually called here or not, uh, but it'll work for descriptive purposes. And then that would sit like. How does that sit? Let me check the instructions. So that goes like so. realize you can't see what I'm doing. Again, need to probably need to like uh, mark out on my mat the viewing angle of the camera. This is going to be very difficult to to do. Need additional hands. But that would be kind of weird. So, let's see. We'll do this in a bit of an odd way. Again, put this nose piece back on. Be a friction. 
hopefully. You know what? Take to the rescue. Since I don't have enough hands, we will artificially create some. Again, I'm just doing this for the purpose of seeing what can be seen inside the cockpit once uh, all is said and done. Probably uh, focusing too much on the details here, but anybody who knows me understands that that is my normal methodology. So they would not be surprised. So we will try to slide this up without messing up. And yeah, so it's not exactly in position, but I'm already pretty sure you're just not going to be able. You'll you'll be able to see the instrument panel. You'll be able to see that there's something behind it. But you won't be able to see behind it. So I think what I'm going to do is just glue it all together. It'll make it easier to handle um, come time to paint it. Um, and just be done with that. And, and indeed, there are some things that I probably won't even bother with. So, for instance, this is this is that back bulkhead. So you've got the the instrument panel, and then a bulkhead behind it, or the mounting point behind it, and then the bulkhead. Well, the back of that is supposed to be titanium, silver, and uh, flat aluminum. But guess what? You ain't gonna see it. So, I'm probably not gonna paint it. <laughs> At least not not uh, the colors that it's, it's calling for. So I will uh, go back on everything I said at the beginning of this stream and actually glue these parts together because what you can actually see uh, is so minimal. Um, I'm not overly concerned with getting a perfect... Um, a perfect uh, coat of paint uh, back there. Again, if I if I had panels open or you know, I was trying to do some sort of diorama that had uh, the back sides of the of the instrument panels visible some in some way, um, then I would likely not be doing what I am now doing and gluing these parts together. Um, but again, since I'm not I'm not doing that, these parts won't be. Um, won't be visible. There's not a whole lot of point in worrying about micro details like that. So I won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these parts together. I will glue the assembly to the floor of the cockpit tub and then I'll let that dry for a minute and then I will test fit it again inside the cockpit to find out that I was wrong and you can see everything. I <laughs> uh, hope not. Um, and we'll go from there. So shockingly, when you don't have a whole lot of tape in the way, that fits a lot better. Get a good bit of glue and uh, the 
seems there. I'll drop it. Butterfingers today. There we go. So one thing that this did do is it's going to make my life masking that little window very difficult because it's now in between all of that stuff. But here is the majority of the interior of the uh, Tamiya Zero. Obviously unpainted, undecaled. Now there's there's other parts um, that we need to be worried about. Perhaps not worried about, but uh, pay attention to is on the insides of the, um, the, cock the cockpit walls. So this is on the insides of those fuselage halves. Those also need to be painted the right color, um, and uh, they have assemblies attached to them. Um, that uh, are also that interior green color. So um, these kinds of things you can add in advance and then spray the interior um, so that when, when you put the parts together they'll all be uh, the right colors. One of the things that is unfortunate is also this this part up here is that interior green, but I can only paint that after I've assembled the two halves and mask that off, paint it, um, because I don't want to paint it and then have that join line through the middle. Um, so that's a little unfortunate that the Ordering is quite that way, but um, it's not a, not a huge problem. It's just something that will have to be dealt with later. Um, there are some other areas that also need to be that interior. So here's the wheel, the tail wheel. Well, I don't need to be the right color as well. So what we'll do is we will get to those fuselage halves and add add the parts that are the color um, of the interior. So there are a few parts there that aren't. So for instance, this part is black. Uh, this part is also mostly black, uh, but this part here uh, is mostly interior green. This part is entirely interior green. And we have some similar parts on the other side that are also mostly that interior green. So we will add those so that when we airbrush them, they're again, all the same, the same color. Um, if something isn't clear, uh, either visually or um, because I haven't explained it, do feel free to chime in in the chat and I will try to explain what I'm doing. Right now, I feel like I'm just kind of filling in the ether with my, my voice, but uh, trying to explain what I'm doing. While also imparting what little knowledge I have about history of these things as well. So for instance, I, I have no idea what I'm adding here. I'm just doing what I'm told. <laughs> um, and that goes on how? Oh, I see. I was looking at the wrong nubbin. That's why it didn't make sense. Again, I need to map out what you guys can actually see because there's no point in having a modeling stream if you can't actually see what I'm modeling. be like one of those uh, steps to draw an owl, and it's like draw a circle, draw another circle, and then step three is finish the owl, and it's this beautifully drawn owl. 
That would be my modeling stream. Modeling stream is here's the instructions, and here's the final pitch. <laughs> so I need to tape out the viewing area or something. Problem with that is that the camera that I, the way I have my camera set up right now, is not in a position that I would just leave it here. So every time I, um, every time I would move something, I'd have to uh, retape it. So we don't want that. That would be annoying. Where did my netherms go? Butterfingers. Suppose I could get some, look into some copyright free music or something. But it's not just my voice the whole time. Or silence, those being the only options. I know you have to be careful to avoid things that are copyrighted, understandably so. I also know that some of these uh, various chatbots have uh, DRM free music uh, options. That can be uh, explored. The, the layout of these trees always is fascinating to me. I mean, if somebody had to give a lot of thought on exactly how to lay all these things out so that minimize waste maximize the amount of parts per tree, get them all on there in a way that is secure for the part. And it's just it's quite impressive. Here's another example of the molding quality. All the little buttons and levers and such that are on there, very nicely done. Also try to use my tweezers where possible because I have had the unfortunate case of using a little bit too much glue in the past and um, not realizing that my finger was touching a wet spot of glue that then had a nice mold of my fingerprint and while fingerprint was very accurate, it wasn't exactly what I was trying to model. So, I try to use my tweezers frequently to place, to place parts even if they're not so small that I really have to worry about it too much. Um, if you see me doing that, that's why. So I have uh, experienced the problems of not doing so. Also fun to uh, chase down parts from time to time when you uh, remove a part from a tree and you did it at just the right clipping angle and it just goes ping off to the side somewhere. There are definitely some of my models in my display cabinet that may or may not be short a piece or two. Um, in some cases, that means I had to uh, 
recreate whatever I've lost. Um, in other cases, it was just, oh, I guess I don't have that part. Let's see, how do you go on there? Here at the back. And you go on this way. Where do you attach the twice? Oh, so you go there. Is that right? That's right. Here we're using that capillary action to get the glue drawn in under the part. We have a nice clean bond all around the part. There will be quite a bit of hand painting that will occur. Kick the camera stand. There will be quite a lot of hand painting that will occur in here because a lot of it is flat black or uh, flat aluminum or, or different colors. Um, but it's a little easier to uh, paint those colors than it is, again, to airbrush and hand paint the same color uh, on the same surface. So it will just require some. Uh, Patience and some steady hand work there. So sometimes you can get a nice angle where you can. Down rather than holding the part. Other times you can't. It's much better, in my experience, to place a part on the flat surface and cut it, cut the extra plastic off there because you've got a more secure, firm surface supporting more of the part. Uh, rather than running the risk of stressing the component by cutting it at a funny angle and uh, thereby snapping something off that you didn't want to snap off. Um, that's not always doable. go down here. Get a little glue down. Just in place there. Not too much there. Again, relying on that uh, capillary action to draw the glue up under the part that's not quite firmly seated yet. And then we can use some slight pressure to uh, get it nice and seated there. So now that you can see there's, there's quite a bit more detail on the inside of the, uh, the cockpit wall that adds more detail to the whole cockpit tub. Depending on the kit, sometimes those details are molded on parts that are and actually, you can see the full tub, so you'd have the side walls as well. Um, in this case, um, they're attached to the, the sides of the, of the fuselage instead. Um, 
there is a small part here that I think I might hold off on paint on attaching. Um, I will paint it together with the rest, but then attach it later because there are things that are behind it that need to be painted. Um, a different color. So I think I will not 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 attach it. I need to go A3. Uh, but rather um, add it later so that um, it's painted the same at the same time, so it should be the same color. Uh, it's color tone, but it's not... Um, preventing me from painting what needs to be painted behind it. So to show you what we're talking about in the instructions here. Focus here. You can do it. Focus here. Please. Please. Of course, it's not going to do it now. Here. You can do it. You're not going to do it. Maybe because I'm zooming too far in? Okay, there it goes. So, this part here gets attached to this part here. And most of it is that interior green. Where they attach, at least. This, this main part is actually black. Um, but where it attaches is the same color. But there's this little nub that will actually be red that would be behind this part. And it would be very difficult to paint that red and not get any red on this or on the wall um, if that part were in place. So uh, we attached this part. We'll hand paint the black and hand paint the red. And once that's dried, uh, we'll attach this part, which also has some other colors to it down here. So this is actually the, what it looks like. You've got the black uh, and a little bit of red there as well. Uh, but uh, I think this is the throttle housing that the, uh, the pilot would use to adjust their speed. So we, we have that popped off the tree uh, in a way that we can hold on to it very easily with a pair of tweezers. Uh, and we'll paint it at the same time as the rest of the interior. Um, but we won't attach it until until later. Um, so I think that is the rest of the parts that are interior green. Um, So we're just about ready to paint that, I think. However, I'm getting kind of hungry. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, the screen on pause, the, the, the stream on pause, and uh, Take a 15-minute break here, go get some lunch, and uh, move the camera while the Be Right Back screen is, is up uh, to see if I can get it in the right position for you guys to actually see what I'm doing. Um, and uh, then try to show you some airbrushing. So um, with that said, I'm going to pause it here or put this Be Right Back screen up make a sandwich and uh, move things around so we'll pick it back up in 15 minutes or so.
Okay, so back from lunch. Just got the sandwich on my face real quick. Um, don't know how well this is going to work. Um, I think you'll be able to see some of it though. Um, so we'll go ahead and give it a try. This is kind of a learning, a learning experience for me uh, on whether or not I can do this. This being, I mean, the uh, airbrush videoing. So I'm going to adjust the cameras a little bit and uh, see where we go. So this is my airbrush booth uh, where I do my airbrushing. No surprise there. Um, it is a safe way, health-wise, to airbrush indoors. So it has a um, switch down here. It'll turn on a um, a, um, a fan that actually sucks air through these grates and into a filter out the back. Um, that does a couple of things. That any loose paint particles that don't adhere to the aircraft or whatever I'm painting will be drawn down into this mesh um, rather than into my lungs <laughs> and also not into the, the air uh, okay. in the room. I also wear this very attractive respirator <laughs> while I'm doing it. Um, it's all very loud, uh, so I will likely mute my mic while that's running just because um, I don't want to blow out your eardrums. Um, so we'll uh, be muted here in a minute, but I gotta gather all of my things, and then I'll kind of show you a little bit of the uh, the process in uh, filling the airbrush and getting it, getting it ready to paint, and then I'll mute uh, to paint. So I'm gonna transfer my uh, my parts from my workbench over to my airbrush hood uh, so that we can paint. One of the things you have to think about is how you're going to hold it. So this is the, uh, the cockpit assembly, and I've got it on a set of tweezers now. So that way I can hold it without touching it. The nice things about the fuselage halves is most of it isn't going to be painted. Uh, so I can just uh, paint the inside of the uh, cockpit component and at the rear where the, 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 tail, the tail wheel well is. And again, I can't, I can't paint this top surface. Um, it's kind of hard to see in the shadows here. But, uh, I can't paint this top surface, the interior green, yet. I don't want to do that until I've already got the two halves together. Because if I have to do any any filling of that seam, um, I want to do it before I paint, and then when I paint, anything that I've missed uh, should also um, be filled uh, somewhat by the paint. So that won't happen this time. I'm also gaining, gathering up my, my cleaning supplies that I'll use um, to clean the airbrush. So I use uh, rubbing alcohol mostly to clean uh, clean out the airbrush along with some um, deionized water. or distilled water, I should say, not deionized, but distilled water, along with a variety of Q-tips and micro brushes and things like that to get on all the, the nooks and crannies of the, uh, the airbrush. Um, so I like to have all that set up and ready to go before the painting begins so that I can very quickly 
clean the brush because it's much easier when the paint is wet than it is when it is dry. I guess I could have had all this stood up while I was still on the be right back screen, but I didn't think about it. So here we are getting all of our stuff together while you wait. So right now I'm, I'm just uh, off camera here mixing the, uh, the paint. Um, just have a little wooden stir stick that I use to make sure that the uh, paint is nice and mixed so the, the pigment is uh, well distributed. It also gives me an indication of what the uh, viscosity of the paint is and how much thinner I might need. So when I, when I paint by hand, you don't really need to thin the paint so much. Uh, but when I paint with an airbrush, it needs to be much thinner to go through the airbrush without um, clogging. So, um, got the airbrush. This is a... Um, a vessel in which I can uh, spray the remaining paint and any cleanser and everything through here so that it, it, it cleans the brush initially that, and it's got a filter here so the fumes don't um, fill up the room. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll put it up here so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so um, one of the things I learned early on is that it doesn't take a whole lot of paint when you're airbrushing, um, it's usually a lot less than you think. Uh, since we're not covering a huge surface, we don't need need a whole lot here. Um, so I have a glass a glass eyedropper that I use uh, to get the paint out of the, the jar. Uh, so this is just that cockpit green, um, and Put it into the airbrush cup. So I have a gravity fed airbrush. Um, so you just put just a little bit of paint in there. I don't want to angle it around too much so that it doesn't just coat the size of the, the uh, airbrush cup. And then the amount of thinner is just kind of dependent upon the paint. A lot of times it's a one to one or a, a two to one thinner to paint, but you're going to get this kind of um, milky consistency with it is what you want, so that uh, you know it, it'll spray pretty well. And so you kind of tap it against the side, which I know you guys can't see, uh, but you kind of just put a drop on the side and see how well it runs down the side of the airbrush cup, and I think I've got that just about right. So we will put that there. Our thinner out of the way. Paint out of the way. So I'll explain what happens um, since I'm about to mute because it's going to become very loud with the compressor and the airbrush hood fan on. Um, I'll attach the, the hose of the airbrush to get the compressed air in. Um, I test the paint mix on just a, a blank index card just to make sure that it's, it's spraying it's spraying well. So I have a blank index card that I use to test that and, I, and you may see me add a little bit more thinner if necessary. Um, and then I'll just start painting. So I'll, I'll probably start um, on like the back side of, of, of one of the cockpit components just so that in case something goes wrong, if not in a place that I'm overly concerned with. Um, actually, I just realized I did not 
mask off that uh, that window. So I need to do that. That is going to be a bit of a problem. Um, so I will talk you through it while I'm doing it because I don't know, I don't know that I can move my camera. Um, close your eyes. This make it a little uh, a <laughs> little disconcerting because I'm going to try to move the camera. Let's see. Can I do this? Hopefully, I didn't make anybody seasick. I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So, I'm back over at the model desk for a minute. Uh, I can't see what uh, you can see. I think this will work. Now we're my laptop is now on the other side of the room with this HDMI cable stretched up across the room. Um, what I need to try to do is cut a small piece of masking tape that will fit that window. I'm not going to try to get it perfect. Um, it has this it's a very small window. It has this uh, arch to the top of it. Um, but I'm not going to be able to easily reproduce, so I'm not going to bother um, well, bother doing that in this case. I'm just going to cut a small piece, a small square, squared off piece um, that will approximate the uh, size of that window because at the end of the day, you'll be able to look through the cockpit and see it, um, but not very well. So, I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, so here we are just seeing if this will fit. It will. So, it's actually too big. It's bigger than I want. But what I will do is probably come back with just a little bit of uh, hand brushing around the edge to get this in the right shape uh, later. But for now, that will fit my needs. So we've got that window covered. I'm going to make everybody nauseous again by moving the camera once more. Close your eyes if you get motion sick. And we're back at the airbrush hood. So an unintended uh, sidebar there. I'll fix the paint up again because it's been sitting there longer than I would like, but that's okay. And as mentioned, I will now mute the microphone because this is going to get loud. Um, please hold your questions. <laughs>
All right, so I was able to turn off the, uh, the compressor and the, the hood vent. So the uh, volume levels are down quite a bit. So I thought I'd uh, turn the microphone back on and <clears throat> talk about what just happened. So um, the parts are painted, uh, and I ran some of the alcohol through the uh, the brush under compressed air to really blow it through um, all the various components. And now I actually take it apart. So um, these airbrushes are very, uh, very delicate um, components. Um, so you take it apart and you can see that's the needle uh, under a magnifying glass, you can look at it, it's actually a very fine point um, that it comes to. Um, I just take everything apart and um, <clears throat> really make sure that I get all the paint out of it because airbrushes like this are very sensitive to um, remaining paint. So you don't, you don't want to leave paint to dry in some of these very fine, uh, let's focus on it, it might not focus here. No? Anyway, very fine, um, machining, um, assembly of these parts. Um, so it takes almost as long to clean the brush correctly as it does actually do a lot of painting sometimes. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration that as you get uh, more familiar with this, you get pretty quick at it. It also depends on the, um, the type and quantity of the paint that you use. Some paint is, uh, dries very quickly, so it becomes difficult to clean well. Um, other paint it's easier to clean up, um, so it doesn't take as long. I've not used this particular color, but I'm very familiar with what to me it is, so it's usually not a painless process, but uh, pretty quick. So right now I'm just using that isopropyl alcohol uh, to do an initial cleaning of the parts. Um, Trying to get as much of the paint uh, off as I can. Uh, and then I'll come in with some micro brushes as well to get on the insides of some of these components that I'm cleaning. So I have these um, micro brushes. I have these very small, small tips to them. Um, that allow me to actually get down into the uh, recesses of the nozzles and, and whatnot and get uh, some of that gunk out that I would not otherwise be able to get to and then would start building up and then causes um, clogs or uh, sputtering or uneven paint patterns that we want to avoid. Uh, when airbrushing. And part of the uh, advantage of, of the airbrush is it's a, uh, of a precision instrument. You can get some very, uh, very fine uh, detail painting done because you can vary the amount of air and thus paint that comes out um, and you can either have a, uh, a big kind of wide spray that puts down a lot of paint that you might want to do say across the wing of the airplane um, or paint in the exterior or you can do a, uh, a very small very precision uh, spray when you're trying to say do camouflage lines or some such thing. Going to need to 
few more of my micro brushes, excuse the chair noise. I don't think I sprayed enough uh, alcohol through it to really get it clean. So inside of the brush is still still a little dirty. So I, I just do this until the brush, the cleaning brush, comes back clean. By clean, I mean it doesn't have any paint, residual paint on it. I think it's, it's rather impossible to get literally all of it. Uh, I'm cleaning off, off camera because this is a awkward position for my hands. Um, difficult to literally get all of it, but the more you get, the better your life in the future will be. So I will keep cleaning this with some of these marker brushes. I've got a little bit of paint left to get. And then what I will do is actually I'll put the brush back together and run that uh, distilled water through. The alcohol itself won't hurt the, the brush or anything, uh, but don't want to leave any of that resi residue uh, of e either, either paint that I've managed to uh, dislodge or um, the alcohol itself. Uh, that was left inside. One part you have to be very careful with is, is this needle because even just bumping the tip uh, against uh, a piece of plastic or metal or dropping it, which I've done unfortunately, can actually bend that tip. And the tip is extremely fine, uh, such that if you bend it, well, you can try to file it back into place or. or uh, um, get it back into the right shape, it's unlikely to occur. So and these needles aren't cheap because of that precision. Um, you're gonna run, I think this cost like 45 bucks just for this little this little piece of metal that I can't seem to get the camera to focus on, but it's, there it is, very, very small. Uh, so we reassemble the airbrush starting with that very fragile needle, knocking things off. Uh, pushing the non-sharp end through and then pulling it back. Um, we kind of reassemble it in the reverse that we us uh, disassemble it um, to protect that needle because that is really the, the precision component. Along, along with the, the nozzles here that um, really make up the difference between quality brush and one of the lesser quality. So. You, can, you can get an airbrush uh, without spending a whole lot of money, uh, but the money that you spend can uh, make a dramatic difference in the quality of the uh, pattern that you can get out of it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, mute for another minute here while I uh, run the compressor to run now distilled water through the uh, through the airbrush to flush out any remaining residue. I just have this distilled water bottle. I'm gonna fill the cup up with that, and uh, I'll run the compressor now at a little bit of higher. Uh, pressure than I do to paint to run that uh, that water through. So I'm muting again just so that I don't blast, blast your eardrums out.
So there's uh, there's how you airbrush, uh, and then clean that airbrush. Um, so I uh, put this little pedaled end piece back on. Um, you can paint with that on, and it kind of prevents side splatter. But I find that it um, tends to actually start catching paint and then um, causing more splatter than it prevents. Um, so I tend not to use it. Uh, but I, I put it back on when I'm done so that um, the needle itself is protected because it still sits out a little bit um, when it's in the airbrush. And again, you want to be very uh, protective of that of that needle because it's delicate and expensive. So now I'm just kind of cleaning up my mess a little bit because I occupied a part of my wife's computer desk to so hold all of my various cleaning instruments. So I will clean that up. I need to uh, go wash some things out and uh, move the camera again. Um, so I'm going to put the beer right back up again uh, for just a moment. Uh, move the camera, move the laptop, um, and then we'll see what's left to do. So, or what, what's next to do. So bear with me for a minute while I um, mute and reshuffle things and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, so we've cleaned up our mess, and moved what we just painted back over to the bench. Um, and so now we can take a look to see how things went. Under much better lighting. One of the things that uh, I definitely need is to get better lighting for my, my airbrush booth, especially if I'm going to do this kind of thing. Um, so, as you can see, we now have this nice, very even coating of paint over all the surfaces. My concerns about being able to uh, get into the various nooks and crannies were unfounded, especially in the areas that you'll actually be able to see. Um, so I've got a very nice, uh, very nice base to start with here on the interior of the cockpit. Same thing is true with the sides of the focus here, please. I think I need to change my focus mode because I think it's looking for faces and stuff. <clears throat> Obviously, it's not going to find that. There we go. So a nice and uh, even painted coat there. You'd never get that with uh, with a brush, so um, that's why airbrushes are so are so handy. You get this nice, very clean, very even uh, coat on on the surface, and it dries really fast. I mean, it's already dry to the touch. And I don't want to squeeze it or anything with my fingers because then I could actually start leaving fingerprints. Um, but <clears throat> it's it's dry enough that I can I can handle it without without concern, um, and. Uh, paint over it uh, as needed. Um, one thing we should check, we, we masked off that little window. Uh, so let's remove that tape and see if it worked. And, and sure enough, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but maybe you can see the difference between my finger behind it and not. That window did uh, remain clear, so that mask was sufficient what we need. Again, the space is, is more than we want, so I'll either touch that up with the interior green. Not my favorite thing to do, to brush the same color as I just airbrushed, um, but something so small, you know, the difference is not likely to be uh, readily apparent. Um, or I might use a, a little bit of a, like a, a black or, or a metallic or something to, to kind of highlight it, but that window is there, and again, you will be able to see it uh, through the, the cockpit opening, because I will leave uh, the canopy open. So when we get to the canopy part of the, the, the build, which, apologies for the wrestling, is still some ways away. It's one of the last things you do. See, the kit tells you to, to close up the canopy. But what I'll do is I'll take this middle component and just set it on the back as if the, as if the, uh, the, the pilot or, or the maintenance crew had left it open. And it'll be very easy uh, to see down into that, uh, into that space. So I'm glad that we decided to go ahead and mask that off. Uh, it will make uh, for a visually impressive uh, nuance and little detail uh, to be seen uh, down later in the, uh, in the build once we have it in there. So what we can do now is actually come back and start doing some of the uh, detail painting, um, which you don't get to see my, my funny looking goggles on my head that I often use for very small painting. Um, and so I think that's what we will, we will do next because if you'll remember from earlier in the stream, if you were here, we have these, these parts that um, overall were this interior green color. But now I need to go back and, and, and do some additional paint colors of blacks and and, uh, and uh, well, mainly blacks here. Um, still holding off on on the guns because I think uh, I will likely airbrush those. Um, they'll be large enough and prominent enough, being at the very top of, of in front of the uh, of the cockpit area. Um, that I think they will warrant uh, airbrushing, um, but I will do that 
uh, at another time. Probably, um, I might do that at the same time that I airbrush, say, the, um, the engine cowl, um, which is the same color. Um, that way I can use that. I, I, as you saw, I just had to clean the airbrush. Um, it's good to be able to paint multiple components that are the same colors at the same time to mi minimize the number of times I've got to clean it. Uh, because it can be quite um, annoying to have to come back and forth and back and forth with the cleaning. So we'll do a little bit of uh, hand painting here. Um, Mostly it looks like uh, this semi-gloss black. I need to get out just because I don't have it out yet. Poor planning on my part. There we go. Semi-gloss black. I'm going to go get a little bit more to drink and then we will pick this up. Alright, drink, drink acquired. So we're going to move the things we're not painting off to the side so that we don't accidentally get them messed up. We will need a stir stick to mix the paint up, make sure everything is nice and consistent. And then because we are dealing with small details, we want one of our finer brushes. I'm looking for my brushes now to find the one I wish to use. And maybe this one. You know what? Let's go. Pull this out. I need to replace some of my brushes. Some of these are not holding up very well. over long use. Some of them I use explicitly for pigment, so those get a little messy, obviously. Um, others are just brushes I thought would be good and turned out not to be so great, but I think, uh, I think this guy will serve our purpose well. So I also need to get some rinse water. So I'll use this rinse water to clean the brush between colors. Or if it just seems like the paint on the brush is starting to get a little gummy, then we can use that to uh, clean things up. I realize I also have brushes up here that I forgot about. <laughs> um, but I think we will start with this guy here because it's a nice short brush that's not too stiff, but stiff enough that I can get into the, the nooks and crannies of this uh, instrument panel and such to uh, get it appropriately painted. Now this we will have to let dry very well before we put any decals on it. So the main attraction of the instrument panel is going to be those decals later. Um, fancy stickers, if you will. Um, but we won't be able to do that today because we need the paint to be very, very dry for that to work. So we're going to start with the instrument panel. Um, 
I don't know how well I can hold this for you to see it and for me to see it. So my apologies if it's not uh, completely clear. Um, but I'll try to, to show you what it looks like in between uh, the things I'm painting. So it doesn't take much paint, especially now that we have the um, the green base. It actually goes in our favor. It's easier to paint on top of paint than on top of uh, bare plastic. So I realized the component I'm painting is actually not in focus for you guys. I'm sorry about that. Without some sort of head camera, I don't know how else to do it. Might try getting some sort of like a downward angle camera mount at some point. Oh, I don't think I want to switch brushes. But right now, this is what I've got. Let's see if my newer jar of this is a little bit more viscous because that's a little gummy. It's quite old, that jar of paint. Oh, this is going to be better. I can already tell. Yeah. We'll switch to the newer. The new hotness. So I don't actually mind minor brush strokes here because you don't want it just to be perfectly black. It'll just kind of disappear. So to me, the paints are usually pretty good about not leaving a whole lot of brush strokes. But even those. I do get here won't be the end of the world. I realize you're getting to see the side of my head a little bit there, so enjoy that. Friends who say, "Gosh, I don't know how you model them. Your hands, my hands shake." Uh, so do mine. That's why you see me resting both hands on the um, tabletop here, so that uh, it's actually supported rather than. Just me trying to hold it because that just wouldn't work for me. Clean the dry, dry dish paint off. Get some more paint. And move to the next piece.
Sorry about the angle. I know it's very unlikely that you can see what I'm doing here. Try to display it. So I've got it painted. It'll probably take more than one pass with the paint because. It is good that this particular jar is a bit more viscous, but at the same time, it's not uh, going to cover things perfectly. So it may take more than one pass to get it looking the way I want. without just sopping the thing in paint. You don't want to do that. There are times for it, but uh, detail painting is not one of them. Occasionally, I find it helps to restart the paint. So it kind of develops this film. Drying paint, I guess. Coagulating paint, I guess. Sounds kind of weird. Kind of what's doing, I guess. Relatively, relatively large flat surface here that I'm painting. I'll show it in a minute. Actually, one of those times where you almost want to brush load it with paint so that it can kind of flow across the surface and flatten out without an excess of uh, brush strokes. Kind of this balance that you need to need to walk between so many brush strokes that it looks amateurish and so smooth that it doesn't look real. for a long time, I still find myself fudging one side or the other of that line. But 
I think they're getting somewhat impatient or just messing up. As I mentioned, my hands are not the most steady. It does make painting some of these details a little stressful. But at the end of the day, it's a hobby. <laughs> I move the camera because I just keep moving off off screen. That's where I want it. I'm sorry, you're going to have to get to see the side of my face a little bit, but that can't be helped. I gotta get close to this to see what I'm doing. At the end of the day, this is the, this isn't what pays the bills. So <laughs> as long as I'm having fun with it, okay, that's all that matters. Okay. Also, some hope that. Uh, Whoever's still watching is enjoying what I'm, I'm doing here, even though at the moment, as I've said, you can't see it. I'll try to fix that in just a moment for you guys. So that takes care of the instrument panel, everything but the gun receivers. So all that work for just that little bit of black. <laughs> now again, it will look very different um, later because all of those empty green circles will have uh, dials in them. Uh, but for now, that's the instrument panel. Um, so we can go on to painting some of the components that are on the floor. So here we're doing, going back to this step here, and we'll be painting a few things black. Um, just, I guess the, the two things really. Um, and then a few, a few, not even on camera, a few things black here, a few things black in here um, that we will uh, paint by hand, and then we'll come back with the uh, aluminum as well and get the aluminum components painted. The red, it's a fairly large piece, and the red doesn't go down very well on bare plastic. So I may, I may use one of my, my rattle cans, uh, spray, spray cans, like a spray paint for that rather than the airbrush um, because that's a lot, uh, a lot of red that I don't really want to try to hand paint. Although I realize that a whole thing isn't red and I just messed up. That actually should have been the same color as the interior. So. I guess we will be seeing how that air, that hand brushes here before long, but we'll continue with the black because that's what we've got open right now. So that was my mistake. Mistake number one of many for this build, I'm sure. But again, it's just perform. So not much black on the floorboard here, just the rubber boot around the base 
the control yoke. Being very careful not to uh, smear this across other components. Shouldn't be back. How high up does that go? Put this next ring. It never does that boot. So the boot is painted, and then there was also a little box on the side that needs to be painted. Fuse box or who knows what? Somebody knows, not me. That uh, whole thing is black. I'm not sure how much of that you're actually going to be able to see through the opening in the canopy, but this is one of those spots that's pretty easy to get my brush into, so I'll go ahead and do the due diligence here. So that the angle on the inside, which is actually more likely to be reviewable, it's less simple. I'm kind of wishing I hadn't put that on rest in there. The nice thing about Tamiya paint is it's water-based. So if you made, saw me randomly grab a toothpick, it's because I was trying to clean the mess I just made. And it worked very well. Okay, now speaking of the armrest, which isn't really an armrest per se, but the side piece there. Are a few places that need to be black for it.
Alright, what else was on there? The two knobs. This would be black. <coughs> Seem to get this position correct. Top down mount is likely a valuable purchase for the future. I think, oh, there was probably some, yes there was, on the sides of the here. Some of the fully black I will probably leave to spray later. Just so that it is a bit more consistent in its coloring. Things like handles are much easier to address with just a little, little bit of paint. While I'm painting the underside of that handle, you will never see it once this closes up. But I have done so nonetheless. Things like this switch panel that I'm basically globbing in black now. I'll come back with a dark gray and highlight those switches so that they are visible. Not just some massive black. But you can't really tell what it is anymore. Brush. Stir the paint and beat. Anybody off camera? All right, I'll talk.
paint kind of gums up pretty quick. There are some other paints that are a little bit better for hand painting than Tamiya. Tend to come up slower. But we're using what we have. So. I do have some of those other paints, but not uh, in great quantity. So I don't do a lot of hand painting. Mostly uh, using my airbrush or spray cans. So, yeah, it has a very good line of uh, just spray paint cans of the very of their various colors, but of this high quality, same high quality paint. So a lot of times in my uh, car builds, for instance. A lot of the paint that I use is just right out of a spray can. And I think they turn out pretty good. My brother is an expert hand painter. He does uh, figures for things like Warhammer and, and the like. Gaming miniatures, I guess, is the best descriptor. He is very, very good at it. Not my skill set. Which is fine because that's not really what I like to build. But the nice thing about this hobby is there are options aplenty. Want to build a plane? There's plenty of those. If you want to build a ship, there's plenty of those. Anime figurines, it works. People out there that of course just scratch build everything, which is also amazing to me.
different skill set for sure. Okay, I think that gets all of the hand painted block out of the way, or the cockpit at least. So we are about to learn how different this interior green looks. I'm hand painted it's <clears throat> compared to airbrushed because I screwed up earlier. That's okay. So we have this lever of some sort that needs to be Needs to be that interior color, and I messed up and misread the instructions. Thought the whole thing was supposed to be red, which, in retrospect, is kind of a silly thing to think. But here we are. Really don't want to bust out the airbrush for something so minuscule as this. So, we'll give it a shot. We need to be able to hold it. So I'm going to tweeze. And pray that it does not pop off into the abyss that is the floor. Grab our interior green. Paints pretty well. May need to come back and touch up the edges. It is a very flat color, so as long as it dries nice and flat, we may not have too much of a crisis on our hands with competing colors. Or not really the competing colors, but competing, uh, I don't know what to call it, shades or what have you. Since I've got this out and open, I'm going to paint a little bit about around that uh, viewport in the floor. Since previously we had taped all that off. to get in there and see what I'm doing. It would have been smarter of me to have masked that before assembling everything so I could uh, not have to uh, come back in and paint this by hand. does look like maybe a slightly different color when it dries. Hand painted versus uh, airbrushed, but we will see. We will see. Noticed that I got a little bit of overspray, underspray, I guess, on the underside here. Wouldn't want to do this on the cockpit glass per se. 
because it will mar the finish a little bit. And on something as minor as that, get that nice and clean. Good. So I think the next color we want to look at is the few places that needed that, so we'll pop that out. One of the things with the metallic colors, as you may or may not be able to see, most of the pigment just sits there at the bottom until you mix up. And then you get this very much nicer metallic. Metallics are a pain in the butt to airbrush because you can see you get this goopy mass of pigment that's just been sitting there on the bottom. Um, I actually have a electric mixer that I could use for things like this, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean, so I don't usually use it. Much better. I don't know why it's really called flat aluminum because it's, it's still pretty darn shiny. But they didn't ask me when they named it. So, so we have some components here that need a touch of silver. Oh, not silver, but this flat aluminum. Again, the camera setup is not really made up made for this, so my apologies if you're still watching. If you're not still watching, you can't hear this, but I apologize. For the ability to not see. Inability to see is probably a better way to say that. disagree with the name of this particular color. I do really like how well it goes on. This way. So just that little bit of, of silver there just really kind of pops out. So for all of my whining about the color name and how annoying it is to mix it up, especially if you have to airbrush it. It goes on very well. It doesn't take much, so it's really easy to accurately paint. You don't have to put a lot on your brush for it. It's a really nice, really nice paint to play with. In fact, a lot of times I've used it, this, this particular flat aluminum, in place of other silver silver hues that don't paint as easily. For that very reason, because they don't paint as easily. So, as quickly as that, we have these nice probably focus focus there we go hydraulic lines or something there very easily painted 
under <laughs> very easily painted under high magnification, I should say. Because these uh, these look goofy, but uh, they definitely help see what I'm doing. Ah, so on to the arm rest thing. We'll paint on the brush. Let's see what needs to be painted here. Being somewhat cautious here because I don't want to go back and have to hand paint the interior green. And knowing that well, I might not get down to the very bottom edge of something that should all be silver, I get enough of it such that when you look through the canopy, you'll say, yep. And silver. Because at the end of the day, that's about all you're going to be able to say anyway. Just a thing such as this. Very small. Adds the good visual detail. But uh, not something to be. We're really stressed about. So I won't be overly stressed about it. I guess I should probably say this is a nice color to paint with when the paint's fairly new. I have another jar of it that's uh, probably ready to be disposed of, to be honest. I think, let's see, black. That needs to be red, but we don't we need to wait for it to dry. Ah. This little level over here needs some silver as well. Or I am my father. I wouldn't say this little level here. I would know exactly what this level is for. It's not a detail that I have in my mind. That level of detail has not often been my, my strong suit. That's something that may come over time, who knows. So let's now look. So let's say inside there. We now have everything but uh, the lever and the red paint. There, but I need to wait for this to dry a little bit longer. The problem with hand painting is it takes a lot longer for it to dry, although it does look like that color is going to be pretty darn close when it dries. So that's clear. Um, actually, while we're waiting, we might go ahead and dab that red on the red. Before we move on to the sides of the Perfect. 
I probably should have waited for the red because I think there were some red components on the side walls as well, but it's okay. Mainly I want this to dry so I can get it in there. there so that is now red. Very red. Always feels weird when I, I paint something gloss uh, inside a military aircraft, but some things are. Check any instructions. Still need to paint paint the seat uh, cushion, but I'll need to airbrush that probably because it's a combination of colors. Um, might do that another time off camera. Um, there are a couple other odds and ends that I'm, I need to rattle can, probably. Black. Uh, that I will do off camera. Just because there's no way I'm going to get my camera outside to show you the 30 seconds it takes to spray something the right color. If you've ever used a can of paint, you know what it looks like. So there's not a whole lot of point in me setting my camera up on my porch like some weirdo. Just a few seconds of painting. So we won't do that. Not much silver on this half, I don't think. More colors on this side. This whole bar is actually silver. All the way up to what? That. Almost dab paint in the wrong place. I've done that before, finger slips or something. And wasn't supposed to be a color is now that color. In some cases I just use our, our, our artist's license and just leave it that way. Other times I'll come back and fix whatever I screwed up. It kind of depends on what it is and how visible it is. Is there any other silver in here? There's not. So as promised, there was a little bit more red. Let's bust that back out. And it's here on the throttle body.
just a little bit. There's the red. I need to come back and touch the black up a little bit when that dries. And there was one other color. XF57. I don't have that out. So, one, um, six, fifty-five. I do not. XF. Painting something this color, but assume that to be a modeling company knows what they're talking about. So, we'll do so. Where was this part? Ah. Oh. I think um, what I'm going to do at this point is drop the stream. Um, so I'll, I'll probably go ahead and spray paint those parts that are all black that are for this interior. Um, let things dry for a bit. I may do some minor assembly later after everything's kind of dry, but at this point um, I'm getting to the point that I really kind of need to let things sit and dry so I can decal them. So I think I'll probably drop the stream here. So thank you to those who are still watching. Um, I'll try to think of how I might set the camera up better next time so you can actually see a little bit better the fine detail work I'm doing. Because just at some point that is kind of the point. Um, and we'll see. So thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.